Peace be with you everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Trevor, really grateful to have you here. And today's video is a, I believe the third installment of my full collection um, series. So I started a playlist and I'm doing 10 fragrances at a time, going over every single fragrance in my collection and trying to keep it as in chronological order as I can. Um, just kind of to also go through my uh, fragrance journey and my development as a fragrance enthusiast. So without further ado, I'm going to get right into the next fragrance in my collection. And that is, I actually got these two fragrances at the same time. Uh, this was one of those first, the first moments in my fragrance journey where I was like, all right, these are going to be my last two fragrances and then that's going to be the end of my collection. Um, Obviously, I was fooling myself at the time, uh, but I remember, I think both of these I got off of Jeremy Fragrance's recommendation. Um, was watching his channel a lot still at the onset of my journey. Uh, one was fresh and one was sweet, so I wanted to get a fresh fragrance for the daytime, office wear, that kind of thing, and a sweeter fragrance for the winter and uh, date night occasions. Uh, so I picked these both up, I believe, from Fragrance X at the same time, uh, and that was Prada Lome, the original, and uh, Dolce & Gabbana Eau de Parfum. Um, so uh, with Prada Lome, uh, neither one of these fragrances need much um, introduction, but uh, this one is just like a really beautiful high-end soap, uh, a slight sweetness to it. Um, it, 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 it almost reminds me of uh, borderline gourmand, at least to my nose. Uh, this is a very sweet fragrance for me. Um, even though it's like very fresh and clean and like I got this one to be the sweeter date night style fragrance. Um, this one always came off as very, uh, very sweet to my nose. Uh, not sweet in an edible gourmand uh, kind of way or in a um, pastry or chocolate or vanilla, just Something about it just always struck me as very sweet. It could just be uh, because it is an iris-based fragrance and sometimes iris has that powdery sweetness to it. But uh, incredible kind of office wear, nice, fresh, clean, high-end luxury soap, just uh, iconic signature Prada style um, scent profile. Really beautiful stuff and uh, I believe this is my wife's favorite fragrance in my collection. Uh, she even wears it herself sometimes uh, and is her favorite for me to wear. Um, I personally find it uh, that sweetness to be a little bit off-putting, uh, so I don't really care for this mu one as much uh, anymore anyways. It, I obviously have quite a dent in it and I enjoyed wearing it when I was a little bit younger and my nose was a little bit more... Um, interested in sweet fragrances, but uh, as I've gotten a little bit older, the uh, intense and the, um, I think the, I forgot what the other one's called, uh, Prada Lome Low. Uh, the intense and the low version of this uh, are really, I find a little bit more my style, uh, but yeah, incredible luxury soap with this one. And then uh, obviously, this one needs no introduction either, kind of like the iconic date night fragrance. It's uh, ginger, orange, and tobacco. Just kind of gives it this really almost caramelized, but very fresh and aromatic sweetness. Yeah, fresh aromatic caramel uh, to some degree, like the sweetness from the tobacco um, mixing with that citrusy and gingery kind of sparkliness. Um, just makes this a uh, really, really beautiful fragrance. Uh, unfortunately, not the best performance. Uh, and, um, but obviously, you know, dent, big dent in this one as well. So I really love wearing this one. It's probably one that I will be getting a backup bottle of after this one runs out. Um, but yeah, so Prada Lome and Dolce & Gabbana is the one Eau de Parfum. That was kind of my first moment in my collecting that I was like, okay, this is going to be the last two and that's gonna be it for my collection. Obviously I was very wrong uh, because I did end up buying uh, another fragrance shortly after that and that was um, another from Imaginary Authors. This is Memoirs of a Trespasser. So I actually found out about uh, 
imaginary authors from Facebook. They were running like uh, Facebook ads and I was part of a demographic that um, Facebook decided was good to send the advertisement to. Obviously they had a turnover and uh, they did get me to buy some from them. Um, so I already bought, um, <coughs> so, uh, excuse me, a little bit dry. Um, still uh, just getting off of fasting for the day for Ramadan. Um, have been just really uh, low energy and it's been hard for me to like get videos out so forgive me for not uploading as often uh, if you're a regular subscriber if you're not subscribed already uh, feel free to join us here we'd love to have you um but so yeah i've already i already had a uh, um whispered myths which is kind of like a cantaloupe and oud fragrance very strange combination um one that I enjoy, but it, it's a uh, uh, very challenging fragrance, so it doesn't have the best reviews on Fragrantica. But this one did have a lot of really good reviews on on Fragrantica and was, uh, as far as I could tell, Imaginary Author's bestseller. And I can see why. It's um, kind of like a more dusty version of um, By the Fireplace uh, by Martin Margiela. So, yeah, just really nice, dry, dusty, old book vanilla. Um, really pleasant, good compliment getter. Great for the winter time, easy to wear. Uh, one of my favorite vanillas in my collection. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to say whether I enjoy this or by the fireplace more. Um, I feel like they do serve slightly different situations. I think this one is a little bit more um, indoor friendly, uh, a little bit safer of an option. It doesn't have quite as much smokiness as By the Fireplace does, but yeah, uh, really nice, easy wear, easy to wear vanilla that is perfect for the winter time. And really glad that I picked this one up from Imaginary Authors. Definitely looking forward to exploring more uh, from the house. Um, they are uh, an indie brand, and you can usually get these uh, 50 ml bottles for right around like $90. Um, Josh Myers, the perfumer, and he's uh, definitely somebody whose work I admire. So yeah, uh, really glad that I got this one, Memoirs of a Trespasser. That was the next one after these two. And then uh, the next purchase was probably one of my most um ridiculous i guess you could say uh so i bought this right as covid first got announced and everyone kind of was still we thought that the economy was going to be shut down for years we didn't really know that we'd be opening up rather quickly thereafter and so this one came on heavy discount i still probably overpaid for it because they're going for a lot cheaper on ebay right now um but this is a fragrance that I bought because I was searching online for what type of fragrance the um, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would have worn. Uh, he, I, I'm a Muslim, obviously I've been fasting for Ramadan and uh, perfume was one of his like three favorite things and he would actually spend one third of his income on perfume. Uh, maybe some of you can relate. Um, because uh, according to like the religion that perfume is considered charity because generally you, the wearer, goes nose blind whereas people around you benefit from the smell. So it's more of a service to others type of act, uh, just wearing perfume. Um, so I wanted to know what kind of fragrance he would have worn and somebody brought this one up and that is Royal Oud by Arabian Oud. So I got this for $420 directly from Arabian Oud's website. So it's authentic. Um, kind of a shame though, the presentation, this uh, it was gold plated. So you can kind of see this is chipping right here and it's losing its gold facet. It's kind of turning into like a silver. But nonetheless, this is musk rose and uh, Cambodian oud. Uh, grows on me the more and more mature my nose gets the further into my journey. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I paid like 420 for this. I think retail is like 700 and they're going for like 250 on eBay right now if you're interested in a full bottle. Um, it's definitely a very difficult wear, especially for like living in the West. 
Um, the, the oud in here is very, it's very high quality, but it is, um, I don't think well received by the general public here in uh, like Western countries. The rose in here is also very high quality. And then the musk gives it this, this very clean balance uh, to the kind of more dirty qualities of the oud. Um, maybe get a sample if you're interested in something like this. Uh, it is, I've, I've got a pretty decent dent in it for, you know, how strong it is. It's, it's the, the oud oil in here is like so dense that it kind of like stains the glass. Uh, you can kind of see that this is like a little bit like tinted uh, from the oud. Very, very, it almost has like a petrol vibe like a gasoline because it's it's so potent and uh like the the animalic is like qualities of the oud are balanced out by the freshness of the musk and the rose and it just comes together in this way that it almost smells like the the good like if you've ever enjoyed the smell of gas at a gas station this is like a slightly better version of the best gas that you've ever smelled at least that's how it comes off to my nose. Very regal, clean, and unique. Uh, at least out of anything that I've had a chance to smell. Um, wish I would have got it in, uh, off eBay, but maybe those are fakes going on on there. I did get this directly from Arabian Oud. So, um, and at the time, uh, like I said, I was looking for what the Prophet, peace be upon him, would have worn. Somebody mentioned that this is something that he, uh, some notes that he liked, and uh, I thought, because of the price it would have been of the highest quality and so i went ahead and grabbed it um because they had a huge discount on it because everyone thought the economy was shutting down so it was like uh 50 off the retail uh from the official website at the time um so that was arabian oud from royal oud uh next fragrance i purchased was creed aventus uh first found out about venba venba fragrance i believe they're kind of like a niche discounter. They don't have the best prices, but they do have uh, good stock and uh, are a reliable like niche discounter. You can generally find better prices uh, now at places like Joma Shop and Aura Fragrance, but I was still kind of new to discounters and finding my way in um, trying to, to you know get the best prices at the time. And this thing was just getting hyped to the moon. Uh, everyone said it was the best fragrance. Um, maybe it used to have been. I did get one of the newer style bottles uh, after they got rid of the um, 125 mLs. Uh, probably, I think this is like a 2019 batch. Uh, no, no, I think this was, yeah, I think it was a 2019 batch. I don't know if that was like where the, they started going downhill but uh, I imagine this isn't what the glory days of Creed Aventus used to smell like, my bottle here. Uh, have gotten quite a bit of wear out of it though. Um, I do get long, a good longevity and projection. It projects like a, very well on my skin, this one batch does. It's just like smoky pineapple. I'm sure if you know it, you know it. Um, I've smelled uh, it either whether accidentally or by intent, uh, a lot of clones of this fragrance. It is pretty good. Um, surprisingly, haven't really got too many compliments on it though. Um, but I just had a, out of curiosity, I wanted to own the real thing because it was just something that was constantly cloned, constantly talked about, and I just wanted to have a base for having this in my collection. Um, so I picked this one up and I thought this was gonna be one of my last fragrance purchases for a very long time. Uh, I was like, okay, well, I'll just get this King fragrance and then I'll be done. But uh, obviously I just kept going and going. This was still very early on in my journey. Um, so the next one I got uh, was also somewhat inadvertently or accidental. So I already owned Guerlain L'Omidial Cologne, the uh, yellow juice white bottle, summertime kind of like creamy, almondy, citrusy fragrance. And I thought it was really good and I heard it was getting discontinued so I wanted to get a backup bottle. So I purchased a backup bottle. Um, the company, however, I got it on Google Shopping so it was from like a, a small 
discounter and then they actually ended up sending me Gearland Lo Medial Eau de Toilette. Uh, somewhat of a happy accident. Um, I paid $40. I thought I was getting a backup bottle of the cologne. They didn't have that in stock. They sent me this instead. And I didn't return it because I was pleasantly surprised by this. Um, became a little bit of a signature scent of mine for a period of time. Uh, wore quite a bit of it. Uh, you just It's a very nice aromatic creamy almond. The originator of the DNA for the line, Terry Wassier, did a great job with this fragrance. I definitely intend on getting a backup bottle of this version. Um, I, I love almost all of the fragrances in this line, and like I said, this one was a happy accident. I'm kind of glad that I didn't get the backup bottle of the cologne and ended up kind of starting my journey with this fragrance, which brings me to my next purchase, which was the... Home Ideal Sport. Uh, so this one, uh, obviously the cologne and the eau de toilette were real big hits with me. This one took me a little while to appreciate, um, but uh, I felt it was kind of basic uh, when I first smelled it. I think it does a good job of capturing the sport um, label. Like sometimes they'll just, people will throw sport on a flanker and it doesn't really smell that sporty at all. But this one I think really does a good job of articulating like a gym fragrance. And it's it's so unique though, because it, st it still has that creamy almond um, base that the, the Guerlain No Media line has. Uh, but it somehow is like very fresh and aromatic and like slightly, go ahead and get a refresher there. Yes, there's, I don't think there's any, I think there's maybe watery notes, like not quite like sea salt aquatics, but it's it's got that just fresh, kind of like out of the shower vibe, but also like a creamy, nutty almond quality in here. So yeah, very unique fragrance. Really glad I have this one in my collection. This is my go-to gym fragrance. Um, level is still pretty high because I haven't been to the gym in quite a long time, uh, especially after uh, my daughter uh, was born. I've just been kind of, she's been taking all of my time and energy up and it's been very rewarding but very exhausting kind of being a parent um but uh that's a little bit sidetracked there but yeah so i started to explore the loma de outline after uh getting uh falling somewhat in love with this in the cologne which brought me to my next purchase which was loma de Al extreme uh, so this one was really hard to find uh, stateside for a long time. I actually uh, found this at, I forgot what discounter it was, but I didn't know that it was a UK discounter and I ordered it from them and it took a long time to ship and I emailed them to ask them like if it was coming and they explained to me, yes, it was just taking a while because I ordered it from the UK. Uh, I didn't know that it was from the UK. I thought I got it from a UK, US discounter, but Really glad I was able to get this one when I did. I think I paid right around $100 for it, which was way more than any of the other ones at the time, um, which is kind of like full retail, I believe, and that's more or less what you can find these for now. Um, but this one's really awesome. Uh, tobacco, plum, and uh, some, I think, cinnamon. Some, like, definitely spicy, sweet, um, rich, uh, kind of like... You know, I, I really thought this one was great for the autumn time, and it is, but it might be the best wintertime one, uh, especially because I hadn't smelled the Lintense with the chili pepper yet, and I think that one's maybe more apt for the fall, um, and this one might be more winter, uh, but uh, hard to say. Definitely a cold weather stunner. Um, something I'm probably going to be breaking out more uh, coming up this fall. I have a pretty good dent in this one as well. I do really, really love this whole line. Like I said, I think Terry Wasser did a great job. Um, and so that was kind of the end of my small exploration into the, the Loma de Al line. Um, and then the next fragrance I got... Uh, after spending a little bit of time at Venba Fragrance, I got that uh, Creed's Aventus. Uh, this one was also getting hyped up quite a bit, and I saw that they had this in stock at Venba Fragrance. 
And um, you know, I, at the time when I was buying these fragrances, I was still single, didn't, wasn't married, didn't have a kid. So I had a lot of more disposable income. So I was able to kind of buy these niche fragrances without much thought. Uh, so this was my next one, Roja's Elysium Parfum Cologne. Uh, about here on the juice level. So I wanna make, say maybe about a fourth of the bottle gone. Uh, this one kind of surprised me when I first got it. Uh, the cap is not very, like I can't pick this up by the cap, which I thought was, I don't know, um, took me aback because this, the way that this brand presents itself is like so luxurious and high class and fancy with these caps and everything. I thought, you know, I, this would have had like a really snug cap, but, um, I don't know. Yeah, I just thought that kind of took me by surprise. This is my first Roja, and I would have expected a little bit more, maybe like a magnetic cap or something for uh, how expensive these were. And then the performance also kind of shocked me. Um, even though I think I went nose blind to this early on when I was testing it, I think it is a pretty long lasting freshie since fresh fragrances aren't particularly uh, long lasting in general. But this stuff is definitely worth the hype i would say it's just beautiful complex uh slightly green um citrus vibe like not green as in like herbal but like green as in like rindy like the rindy parts of a citrus um really great stuff uh but again yeah every everything from the kind of like sh uh short-lived performance to the like non uh sturdy or like the cap just like not sticking i actually got online and was like asking in a few facebook groups whether or not i got sold a fake but uh they said since i bought it from venba fragrance it was probably the real thing because they're a reputable um seller uh but yeah uh definitely grew on me i you know, spending as much as I did, I, I my expectations were a little bit higher, but uh, now that my um, I'm a little bit more versed in fragrances and I'm like further into my journey, I definitely appreciate this fragrance for what it is. And I'm very much looking forward to wearing this as the weather's heating up around me where I'm at now. Uh, so that was uh, my next fragrance in my fragrance journey. That was Elysium Parfum Cologne from Roja Dove. And then finally, the last one in this list of 10 um, is none other than Blue de Chanel. Uh, so obviously, you know, f right about from the Creed up to the uh, Roja's Elysium, we were kind of moving into the summertime at this point in my fragrance journey. Uh, again, I was mostly watching Jeremy Fragrance. I think he recommended everything, you know, in these 10 here other than the arabian oud the facebook ad um imaginary authors and then the small detour into exploring the gear line low midi outline uh so blue de chanel was obviously something that jeremy was hyping uh he said that the eau de toilette was the one to get for the summertime i've yet to try the eau de parfum or the parfum so this is the only one in my collection i'm hoping to get the uh, eau de parfum next um, we'll have to see though. I'm, uh, blue fragrances are kind of like my least favorite genre and I've got a couple of other, um, you know, items on my hit list. And then now I've been, uh, I found Ramsey's channel. So now vintage is like vintage fragrance are kind of like on my radar. So I've got a lot on my plate, um, on my wish list. So getting a, a blue to Chanel flanker might not be top priority, but I, you definitely want to get my nose on the whole line but yeah this one was somewhat of a signature scent of mine for a while i'm really down to maybe like the last tenth of the juice level here maybe 10 ml is left wore this one uh extensively after i got it i th it's still one of my like favorite clones of all time just even though it's like so basic and generic the simplicity in the um you know uh, like it's generic because it defined the scent profile like it, it was just so popular and ubiquitous that it became the blue fragrance and so like i i admire it for that reason it's definitely something that 
uh, you know, woody citrus semi shower gel, but with the Chanel quality. Um, this was like when I first smelled it, just reminded me of what the idealized form of cologne should smell like. Like I just felt as if this um, fit a picture perfect cologne profile when I first got my nose on it. That's why I wore it like day in and day out and kind of neglected the rest of my collection for uh, a good majority of this summer. Or not this summer, but the summer that I bought this in. Um, so that is uh, 10 more fragrances in my full collection. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to do right about one video of these a week with 10 fragrances each uh, exploring my entire collection moving forward and I'm going to upload them into a, a playlist so you can check out the other two videos that I've done so far and I appreciate you sticking with me to the end of this video I'll see you in the next one take care